Hello, my name is Christopher Reed and I'm a professional artist and I'm going to explain to you today how to use linear perspective to draw three-dimensional geometric shapes on a two-dimensional surface. Linear perspective is a system that was developed in the Renaissance in order to draw buildings and architectural details more realistically. There are a couple key points you need to understand about linear perspective. The first is that in any scene there is a perceptual horizon line and that is at eye level. So I'm going to draw a horizon line. So the horizon line is at eye level. The reason that's so important is everything is relative to your location on the earth. If you get down lower, the horizon line stays at eye level. If you get up higher, the horizon line stays at eye level. So wherever is eye level is the horizon line. The next important key concept in understanding linear perspective is that objects that are farther away appear smaller. It doesn't mean they're actually smaller, it's just the way our eyes see. Linear perspective helps you understand how to draw things correctly. We're going to start with one point perspective. In one point perspective you have a single plane of a geometric shape facing towards you. We're going to start by dealing with cubes. So in one point perspective you have a single vanishing point. This vanishing point is a point on the horizon where all parallel lines appear to converge. If you have a single plane facing directly towards you, then the sides of this plane appear to converge at that vanishing point. Draw vanishing lines from the corners of the cube you now have the second side of your cube. This corner is closer to you than this corner. Therefore, it is larger. If the plane is below the horizon line, the same thing applies. You see all these lines converge at a single vanishing point. Now it's just a matter of drawing a line that's parallel to here and parallel to there. We have the sides of our cube. What if it's above the horizon line? I don't have to draw the lines all the way there, I just have to aim them at that vanishing point. These lines are parallel. These lines are parallel. That's how simple one point perspective is. So you think, oh, these are some cubes. How is that useful to me? Well, if you're drawing a road, Everybody seen the train tracks? Another thing to notice about one point perspective is that lines above the horizon line go towards the horizon line as they move away from you. Lines below the horizon line also move up towards the horizon line as they go away from you. This line, as it goes away, is not heading away from the horizon. So everything is converging on the horizon line at a single vanishing point. So one point perspective works great for when you have a single plane that's facing towards you. Or only two parallel lines. But what if you're looking at the corner of a building? The corner is closer to you. Which of the two planes is perpendicular to your vision? Neither one. So in this instance, you would need two vanishing points, and this is called two-point perspective. You have a vanishing point out here, we're going to call vanishing point one. You have a vanishing point over here, we're going to call vanishing point two. Now these vanishing points are generally at the edges of your peripheral vision. So if you take your hands and you figure out where peripheral vision is, where you can just barely see your fingers off to the sides, and keep your arms that distance, that's how the vanishing points move. So in two-point perspective, we now have a plane here that goes to a single point over here. So we've established a single plane just as if we were doing one-point perspective. But now we have a second plane that goes to a different vanishing point. You have the tops and bottoms. Drop another line. Now you have a rectangle that is above and below the horizon line. For tall buildings, this is how we usually see it. But what if, it, if you're on top of a building, looking down at other buildings?
we have a plane with this as its vanishing point. We have a plane going to this vanishing point. Now you take this point and head towards this vanishing point. And you take this point and head towards that vanishing point. Where they meet, you have your fourth corner of the box. It will work even if it's above the horizon line, if you have a floating shape. Now you have three geometric shapes in space. So you may say, well, what if I'm drawing a different type of shape? Most shapes will fit inside of a cube, some sort of rectangular solid. So now that you understand one point and two point perspective, you may wonder, how does this apply to drawing from real life? In real life, you can find the actual vanishing point by looking at the scene in front of you. If you take a straight edge, it can be a, a brush, a pen, a pencil, you can hold it up, close one eye, and follow the line from one point to the next. You may think the top of the, the building is flat, so it would be a straight line, but when you hold your pencil up in real life, you will see that it is not straight. You can then take a second object, say two pencils, and determine where they meet at eye level. So that I could hold up one pencil, in this case a marker, and another, follow them to eye level, and establish where an actual vanishing point is in real life. If you're doing a drawing where you're going to have a vanishing point that is far off of the picture plane, which is very common in two-point perspective, you can aim at an object off of your picture plane. A lot of times I'll take a kneaded eraser and set it where I think the vanishing point should be on a table. And I will aim at it when I draw my lines. You can also take a piece of tape and dental floss. And take the dental floss where your vanishing point is going to be and now your dental floss gives you your straight line for a vanishing line. Because the horizon line is relative to your eye level, it's important where you place it on the picture. If you place it high, it gives the impression that you're standing and looking down at the area below the horizon line. If you place it low, it appears like you're looking up, like you're low, sea level. So in general, when you see landscapes, there's a relatively low horizon line. If you're looking at a city from street level, you're going to have a low horizon line. That doesn't mean you can't change that, but that's the general rule. You may have wondered how to space objects equally across a distance. Telephone poles may be 20 feet apart, and you have a whole row of them. Well, the distance between them is going to appear smaller as they get farther away. So if you have a telephone pole here, and the next one is here, how do you determine how to space them? I'm going to show you a nice, easy shortcut. I'm going to draw a vanishing line across the tops and the bottoms. Now I'm going to find the center of this pole. I'm going to draw a line to the vanishing point. I'm going to draw a line from the top of the first pole through the middle of the second pole. And that gives me the base of the third pole. I'll do the same thing. You should notice that the distances between the poles are getting closer and closer. That is an easy way to space them. Now if you're doing something more complex, you have to use a series of points and lines, and that's another lesson that I'll get into later. I hope that this lesson has helped you understand linear perspective better so that you can draw more accurately and do better paintings. Thank you.